Hey folks, welcome back to another podcast with your host, Miriam Khan at Raise Your Vibes. Today's podcast is about the false twin flame. And for some of us that may not know the background to this, we, if you're spiritually inclined, you may believe in this, you may not, but we go through different relationships in our lives. We go through um, different aspects depending on our cycles, our soul cycles and the relationships we had agreed to take part in on our journey here, our spiritual journey here. And some of this comes from our past agreements, past life cycles. It comes from um, souls that perhaps we've met before, perhaps we're meant to meet again. And again, you know, not everybody has to believe in this. It's it's a perspective that some people believe in, some don't. There are different realms of relationships we can enter. We could have, you know, a karmic journey with somebody. Your karmic journey is basically someone that's done you wrong or you've done them wrong. And that connection can be quite intense. The two of you have got various different lessons that you have to learn. There's a lot of trauma, there's a lot of abuse, there's a lot of upset, there's a lot of um, challenges in that particular relationship. It's very full on, very heated, can be very argumentative and that karmic cycle is there for you to hopefully grow as a person as painful as it is. It can be also very, very toxic. Some people stay in that karmic relationship some of us get out. Now, as and when you've hopefully got out of that karmic relationship and you've healed and you're on your journey, then spiritually, supposedly, you're meant to then meet the person that you're supposed to be with because you've done your lessons, you've worked through it, you've got through the excess baggage, beg your pardon, you've worked through emotionally and spiritually and mentally the aspects that you're supposed to work on by yourself, you're supposed to release old patterns, whatever it was, along then should come along your twin flame. Now your twin flame is someone that you're meant to be with. That's the person that's the other part of like your soul, the person that you're meant to be in this complete relationship with that's love and care and helps you grow. And this person is meant to mirror you, but obviously maybe from a female perspective or male perspective, they're like the mirror image of you. Sometimes it doesn't always connect like that. It takes a while to discover that person. And it could be that they've already been in your circle, but in the distance. It could be that you've probably been familiar with them or they just come when you really, really least expect it. And sometimes when we're in these karmic relationships and we're healing and we're going through that different journey, we try very hard to find um, that twin flame. We're desperate to know who we, who that person is. And sometimes we don't. Sometimes we really don't care. We just think, look, I need time and I need space to myself and I'm not going to be rushed. I'm not going to be pushed into a relationship that doesn't save me yet when... The most important relationship to me is the one I'm having with myself. And obviously, lots of people will be in different scenarios in regards to that personal journey. So when you least expect it, along comes this individual who you really and truly believe is your twin flame. It's only at the end of that journey that I think you wake up and realise, hold on a minute, this person was not what was on the tin, you know? They appeared to have all the qualities and the traits of a twin flame, but actually, in reality, they're not. So when that, you know, relationship starts, if you're thinking about how can I spot someone, how can I be uh, wise about this? What I will say is, and from personal experience, it's something you do have to go through. It is something you do have to experience and in, and wake up from and Walk that path because it is a lesson, a big lesson of growth and a big lesson of, you know, have you learned certain things from your past? So when this person comes in to your life, it is going to feel like lots of love bombing, 
lots of love, lots of ascension, lots of saying the right things and saying things that you don't normally express to anybody else. So your deep hidden, not necessarily secrets, but hidden parts of you, the spiritual parts of you, maybe there's certain characteristics you're looking for in a partner or you've got certain beliefs of past life, whatever it is, there's something hidden that you've not expressed with anyone. This individual seems to know. And they mirror all the hidden parts of you spiritually that you had not shared with another soul. And so you believe that they are, in fact, your twin flame. They know spiritually things about you that you've not shared with others. They might know past trauma. They might know elements of it. They might know things from a spiritual level that you haven't shared with anyone else. And initially, there is trauma when you meet this twin flame. Initially, or so you think, anyway. So initially, there is trauma. And the thing is, you don't realize it, but a lot of trauma starts to resurface. So things from your past that you didn't quite close the door on, trauma-wise, it might be it might be in countries you've gone to where something has happened to you. It might be specific places, certain memories, all things in the past, in your past life that triggered you and you didn't quite fully heal from. It was like there's still a splinter there of pain. And this so-called you know, twin flame, when in fact it's a false twin flame, does everything they can to trigger that trauma. Now, initially, it is very, very painful. And initially, you're thinking, why the hell am I going through this? Why the hell am I hurting on such a deep level? You come to a realisation that that trauma has to be released. It might be a small splinter that you didn't realise was still embedded under your skin and under your heart and under your soul. And it had ramifications because clearly that part of you still wasn't 100% fully healed. It might be there was still that 1% where there, was, where there was trauma. And as you're going through this, the other individual, the false twin flame, has similar um, occurrences happen to them. Now, you as an empath, as someone who's genuinely on the on the search for that twin flame, doesn't want to obviously go through pain, but understands that this is part of your healing journey and understands that this is something, okay, I don't like this, but I'm surrendering and I'm letting go. It's something I have to go through because in order for me to be completely happy and completely okay with myself, this is something I have to go through. It's part of my cycle. It's part of the lesson. It's something that's come from God. Whatever your faith is, whatever your belief is, it's something you're having to experience. And so you go with the flow. You surrender. You let it be. Now, the thing is, you'll notice that this keeps happening again and again and again. The cycle keeps occurring. The triggers keep occurring and they become more frequent. And that relationship that was of love, that was of tenderness, that was of care, initially, slowly, very slowly, very subtly, very slyly, the mask of the so-called twin flame slowly starts to fall off. Now, there are times when we observe as an empath, we observe as somebody watching this occur, and we notice that there are changes within our own soul. Our soul is, you know, shutting off. Maybe our soul is suffering. Maybe our physical body is suffering. For example, you could be could be keep getting a cold, flu. You could be worn out. You could be drained. You could just feel exhausted. No matter how much sleep you have, you just feel exhausted. You don't have the energy to do anything. And this individual shows some narcissistic tendencies, which I've talked about in another podcast. But your body starts to take on battle after battle after battle after battle. And you start to realise slowly but surely that this is not really a twin flame soul, twin flame partner. And 
it takes time for that mask to really and truly fall off this individual that you're with. And if you're somebody like myself, you need evidence. You need um, to hold them accountable. So you will, in that relationship, at times address issues, address situations that occur. And each time with a false twin flame, who remember is meant to be here on a spiritual journey with you, they're meant to be here to do, um, you know, part of um, a particular spiritual journey to help you both grow, to help the world. Whatever that spiritual message is or spiritual journey is, it's meant to be one of balance. It's meant to be one of give and take. And it's meant to be one of harmony. Of, of course, there's going to be things that trigger you, but it should come from a place of love. And with the false twin flame, initially it starts like that. They bamboozle you, you know, they bamboozle you with the words, with the phrases, with the past life scenario. They bamboozle you with things that you want to hear and, you know, cover and mask because they're very good at manipulation. You know, a lot of them are very good covert narcissists. So they mask who they really are. They're very good at pretending. And some of them should get freaking Oscars for the way that they perform. But the thing is, the mask falls off, as I said. And the mask falls off because this individual can only keep that pretense up for so long. The person that they're with starts suffering, starts to feel drained, starts to feel whole spectrum of emotions from you know, betrayal and to very hard disharmony for that person who's to in that relationship with understanding them. this to manipulation totally, totally understand and feeling this disbelief. is not the relationship for me, this is not my twin flame. And it can take them a long time to really focus on the red flags because when you're in that relationship and it's one of love and it's one of tenderness and it's one of care coming from the other individual, that is, not the false twin flame, the you know, the person that's got these sort of tendencies to, to pretend. You're invested, so it's not that easy for you to walk away. But believe me, the red flags are there from that false twin flame. And the other individual give them chance after chance after chance because they're invested. They've invested love and time. They want to see that relation grow. They understand that perhaps that the, you know, false twin flame at the time, obviously, they're thinking it's twin flame, is going through their own, you know, cycles of healing, cycles of trauma, cycles of pain. They understand that because they're an empath. That's why this false twin flame has selected them. But deep down, the reality is this other individual is like a sociopath. They're out to destruct. They're out to destroy. So they will do things subtly. They will do things half-heartedly. They have no intention of integrity. They have no intention of accountability. Their whole aspect is to destroy this individual. And a lot of it is revenge. A lot of it is karma. A lot of it is, again, soul message. And a lot of the time, if you're an empath, it's because you have naturally drawn light and you have worked through your things. You've worked through your situations. But this individual can't stand that. So the false twin perception is so that they hook you in. They hook you in to give you this false belief that, hey, I'm meant to be the love of your life. When the reality is it's quite the opposite. And slowly but surely when you are in that partnership with them, there will be red flags and you will put your boundaries in. You will try and put your boundaries in. You'll repeatedly say, hey, this isn't rolling with me. Hey, we need to have a discussion about this context or conversation. We need to have a discussion about the horrible things that you've said to me because that's not going to roll with me. Hey, we need to discuss why you said that particular word, why it's triggered me. We need to, when we have an argument, maybe we have a time out. And why is the argument getting extremely heated? Of course, you know, when you're in a loving, caring relationship, there's times that two of you are going to argue and you're going to um, not get on with each other. 
but when it's a false twin flame, you'll notice that the arguments become more and more intense because that individual cannot get you to be manipulated. You are starting to see the cracks. You are starting to see the red flags. You are starting to notice a lot of things and you're stepping back and you're stepping back each time you're taking your energy back. And perhaps also you're detaching from that love. You stay in the relationship for the sake of that relationship, but actually you're questioning all the time, why am I there? Why am I still here? And for, for some of us, we have, to, we have to learn the hard way. I certainly did. You have to learn the hard way. The false twin flame will keep almost like prodding you and prodding you and prodding you. A lot of the time they push you to want to leave and it's a test. And sometimes it's a test of, will you stay with me through the difficult times? And sometimes that test isn't worth it, but it's part of that journey for your growth and your mindset as, as difficult it is, as it is and painful as it is. The false twin flame will keep appearing to be the love that you are missing. So you've got your own self-love, don't get me wrong but the love of perhaps you no know, uh, family members that aren't there, perhaps it's companionship, perhaps it's um, on an intellectual mind, you know, whatever the situation is, that there was a jigsaw piece of you that was missing, that person matches, you know, temporarily that is. Because remember, this person has morphed into being a, a false twin flame. They've researched you, they've looked into things, they have studied you very well. That's one of the things they'll do to pretend to be your twin flame. And as I said, throughout that journey, however long you are with them, they will give you this babble about being spiritually inclined. But actually, a lot of it is what they've absorbed from you, what they've pulled from you. And they've gone away and done a bit of research, clearly, and then are spouting things that seem, you know, as if it's coming from them. And it's logical and it makes sense and it's things that seem to fit in with your aspect of spirituality. When in fact, this person is again morphing into something that they're not. And they're putting different masks on. Masks of loyalty, masks of superiority, masks of uh, being equal. Masks of, you know, love and warmth. When in fact the real mask is of betrayal, of trauma, of I want to bring you down to my level, of I don't want to be stood in your light and I'm in the dark and I'm in the shadow. They are not someone that understands what real soul work is. They're false. And they actually want to be like you. They actually want to stand in that light, but they can't. Hence, they're drawn to you almost like a, a moth, you know, to a, to a light. They want to be around that energy of yours because you've worked on your issues. You've worked on your um, aspects of trauma and healed. And although you might not have fully healed, like I said, there might be still some aspects of trauma and uh, work that you have to do on your mental health or physical health or spiritual health, still you've worked on yourself. You're aware of who you, tr you truly are. You're aware of your true identity. And you have certain characteristics that you won't budge from. The false twin flame, however, doesn't. Really doesn't. And when their skin starts to shred, you'll notice that when they erupt and they erupt like a volcano, you'll notice certain triggers that you've said, now, when I say triggers, I'm using the word triggers loosely. Triggers in this aspect of you have put boundaries in, in this relationship. That individual doesn't like it. Now, if it's a true false, you know, a true twin flame, they would be understanding. They would be compassionate. They would be meeting you halfway. Not saying, oh my God, you're abusing me. Oh my God. Everything you say, they spin around. Oh my God, you you think I'm a liar. Oh my God, you don't believe me. Oh my God, um, you're wasting my time. You're hurting me. And it could be that you've just said, 
you know, I need I need to talk to you and I need to lay my cards on the table. But that false twin flame likes to go into this, um, you know, victim mode, victim mentality. Because while ever they're in that place, they're not taking accountability. They're not looking at the real issues. They're not um, looking at the fact that they need to work on themselves. The other individual in this partnership will be saying, hey, you hurt me. These are the things you did. These are the things we need to address. And this is what we need to do to try to go forward. But that person doesn't want to hear it, clearly. You know, they really don't want to hear it. They really don't want to work on themselves. And this is a big, you know, breakthrough in that revelation. And the other individual in this partnership, which is likely to be obviously an empath, will have tolerated it for so long to the point where Silence is often the best answer. And you walk away. That other false twin flame will do everything they can to prove to you that, oh no, I'm the love of your life. Um, I'm the one that's meant to be with you. And you're the one that maybe ended things, but come on, let's work it out. They keep thinking you're going to go back because the, the different scenarios of the breakup in the relationship or the fights or the arguments... To them, they've like they've discarded it and they treat you like trash. The thing is, you as a strong individual, as an empath, understand her and understand pain and understand upset and you understand that in, in relationships you need space and you need time. So you're not all upset like they are. You, you've actually stood back to protect your growth. You've stood back to... Allow yourself to be at peace. You've stood back because you understand that we all need time to ourselves. That's the most important thing. And sometimes that's not easy to gather. But you need it. And when you come into the end of this false twin flame relationship, the huge masks of falsehood that they presented do start to come off and you end up sitting back and asking yourself what is this person bringing to me and to my peace if there is peace because maybe they've taken your peace away but what is it this person is doing for my soul how are they enriching my life i personally couldn't find answers to that one which told me it's not the right place for me to be in what is this person doing to nurture me to help me grow to support me if the answer is nothing then you know your answer this is not a real twin flame this is a false twin flame that's given the illusion that they are here to help you on that spiritual per you know purpose and party and path when in fact they're not and when you sit back and have that real, like, realisation and meditation and focus on this situation, you come to terms with the fact that it's time to let them go. And whether you realise you've done it or not, maybe subconsciously you have been doing for a while. You've been letting them go. Because as much as you had love for this person and you were in love with this person, whenever they've attacked you, whenever they've attacked your spirituality or you as a, as a person that's got very high standards perhaps each time when they've attacked you verbally or physically or you know mentally as well as spiritually you personally have detached and you're no longer physically there spiritually there your body is your mind sometimes isn't you're still giving the illusion to them that yes this is a relationship we're in it but actually you're not there. And that false twin flame doesn't even realise. They're going along, they think everything's hunky-dory, they think that, oh, you know, um, they're going to come running back to me and I can carry on treating them like this because they're going to keep running back, which is not true at all. But they don't realise it, they haven't woken up to this reality that you actually have stepped out of the door and you're gone. And... It's only a matter of time before the rest of you follows and the rest of you follows pursuit. And believe me, ending a, ending a 
false twin flame relationship comes with its burdens. You will go into cold turkey mode and you will cut them off. Believe me, they don't like that. They don't like it. They'll pretend, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be, I'm going to be blocking you on various social media platforms. I'm not going to talk to you anymore. You're going to end up stalking me, and da 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 da. You're the bad guy. Obviously, they, they change the narrative because they want to be in victim mentality. The reality is, you're the one who's actually put the boundaries in. You're the one that's blocked them. You're the one that doesn't want that energy around you anymore. And you're doing it for your own protection. You're doing it for your own mental health and your own safety because you do not want that person around you anymore. You see your worth. You see that you need healing. You see that you need time to get over this relationship and time to step back and assess it and to understand and evaluate what that relationship taught you. But also you need to grieve. Grief is an important part. That individual won't be but you will be, you'll be grieving. And sadly, there are, t there are things that you discover maybe about them afterwards that God wanted you to see. As painful as it is, as heartbreaking as it is, soul-destroying as it is, God wants you to really see who that person really was. Because at the time, you know, like I said, certain masks were on and now they've fallen off. And through your journey, you were meant to go through that. As painful, and believe me, as painful as it is, you have to give yourself time to grieve. And there are lots and lots of lessons that have occurred in that relationship. Hopefully you've grown stronger and wiser. Hopefully you've learned key lessons. Hopefully you have addressed issues in yourself that needed combating, needed, looking at, you know? And some of your friends will say, you've rushed into that, you weren't ready, whatever. But you knowing yourself, that relationship had to occur at the time that it occurred. And now it's a case of coming back, stepping back from it, detaching from it even more and going through your healing journey whether that means being upset, crying, time to yourself, switching off, catching up on rest, sleep, slowly removing traces of that person from your heart, from your, maybe you've got photos, videos, whatever. Maybe their belongings are in your place, whatever. Slowly you detach, slowly you grieve and slowly you say goodbye to that person bit by bit. The false twin flame, however, will be extremely angry and annoyed. And sometimes we'll also pretend that they're, they're cool with everything because allegedly the breakup was on their terms, which it was obviously not. But they will, they will keep spreading that falsehood. They will not really ever take accountability for who they were. They will not take accountability for the fact that they damaged uh, individuals. And they meant to. And everything is almost like a covert narcissist style, switching it to you, switching it back to you so that you take accountability. You're the one that takes that on your shoulders. The twin flame or the false twin flame won't. And you might be sitting there after you've gone through this thinking, why did I have to go through that? Why? You know, this was someone perhaps you were going to marry you were going, you've invested time with them, you've travelled with them everywhere, you were hoping to, to lay big foundations of togetherness, only for it to be pulled from, from you underneath, from, you know, like a magician when they pull the rug from under you. And everything you thought you had solid foundations for have just vanished. But, you know, you sit back and you detach and you really look at the things that that person wasn't who you thought they were. They were an illusion. And they're very good at mastering how to pretend to be something they're not. And that's what we have to wake up from and realise. That that false twin flame journey triggered a lot of things that were unhealed in you. And it helped you grow 
Hopefully, it helped you grow. Hopefully, it helps you to keep healing. Hopefully, it's helped you lay even more boundaries into your life. And hopefully, it's taught you the word no more instead of saying yes. Because naturally, they're drawn to empaths. So you've said no more. You've laid thick you know, boundaries and foundations. And you've said, this situation isn't going to happen with me. <clears throat> From that, you can hopefully then go on to focus on you and focus on healing. And what's interesting is that the minute that you have totally put that person out of your life, some things start to flow naturally for you, for your better. And things that you were meant to do a long while back, but whilst that person was around, their energy was, was muffling the synchronicities and the things that you're here to do. So you start to realise your growth starts again. Your life starts again. Of course you've got to go through healing and you have to go through, you know, looking after yourself and re-grounding yourself, rebirthing yourself. That false twin flame, they're going to carry on because it's, it's the only thing they know what to do. And like I said, they're a covert narcissist underneath it. So their ego will let them continue um, searching for another victim. But you yourself, you know, you'd agreed to that soul lesson and it's now understanding how you can use that wisdom to go forward and help other people. And that's one crucial thing you have to learn there's no regret it's more about what have I taken away from this and you know have I held on to my integrity have I been honest have I been truthful have I laid all my cards have I tried to make it work the best way that I could yes you did and now it's time to walk away and it's time to say that I need to work on the relationship with myself and that's what you sometimes get to. False Twin Flame, like I said, they were already onto another um, supply and, you know, will pretend to others, oh, yeah, I've disregarded them, they're not right for me, yada, yada, yada. They'll have their own narrative. Let them carry on with their own narrative because, you know, you have your truth and that's what matters. So an interesting podcasts an interesting revelation and I'm sure there's many of you out there perhaps you don't realize you're still with a tw false twin flame and if the real twin flame is meant to come into your life then let it be and if they're not let it be because the best relationship you'll ever have is with yourself your true authentic self and don't let anyone ever compromise that this has been Miriam Khan Raise your vibes. Thanks for tuning in.